How to set up Visual Studio Code for building a website. Visual Studio Code is a free and powerful source editor developed by Microsoft. It works on Windows, Mac OS and Linux, one of the most popular web development tools out there today. Here we're going to go through a seven step guide to setting up Visual Studio Code to work with a website that is running client side languages. In other words, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. First of all, you need to install Visual Studio Code. That should be straightforward. You've got the link there. Then step two, I'd advise you to open up a GitHub account. GitHub is also owned by Microsoft and they work very closely together. Once you open up your GitHub account, sign up for a GitHub Copilot. Now GitHub Copilot is an array of AI agents and assistants that can help you in writing code. And by the way, if you are a student, you may be able to get a free copy of this. Otherwise, they do offer a free copy that gives you a limited number of prompts, but very much worth getting. And you can see all of that, how to do that once you open up your GitHub account. Then step number three, create a folder for yourself somewhere on your machine. Now, every single project that you do in Visual Studio Code should be in its own folder. That's the best way to work with it. Now, in my case, I have made a folder. I have called it VS Code Setup and it's already on my desktop. Create yours. Once you make a folder, simply go to File, Open Folder and open your folder. In my case, the folder I have made is here, so I'm just going to open that up. And here we are now inside my folder. Now, in your case, where, I've, where you see these recent files, you might not have those if you haven't made any recent folders and files before. So don't worry about that. Um, if you have, you, you'd see them there. Now here, you've opened up your folder and here is your Explorer view. And that is where your files are going to appear. You won't have any there yet if you've just opened this for the first time. And inside there is your activity bar. These are quite important. That's how I get to here. So if I click on this here, see that collapses it, that opens it up again. And we'll explore a few of these as we go along. Now, I have opened up all my files. Step number four, the first file you should create in any project should be the readme file, readme.md. MD is a markdown file. And here you can see my readme file. Markdown is a very simple language to learn. I'm not going to go into markdown now. Um, but as you can see here, there is my, I've got one hash sign in front of that and some words. If I look at this in the preview, you see how it appears as if you're looking at HTML. Now, if you go to markdownguide.com, it will give you all the pieces of code you need to, be, to know to be able to write markdown files. They're very simple. You can learn markdown in about 30 minutes. But markdown is the language that most programmers use now and it has been embraced by AI tool. And that's how you instruct your AI tools also. So please do learn markdown. Now, Markdown files end in the extension .md and in this case, this is simply telling the user, this markdown files are for humans, although AI also reads it and it does get from some help from your markdown file, but markdown files are for humans. So inside here, put a description of your project. In this case, I am teaching you how to set up Visual Studio Code. So that's what I put this is about. And I put all the steps here. In your case, if you are building a website, maybe as a project or as whatever, I just mention here what the website is about, what you want to accomplish out of it. It's also a good for a reminder to you. And save that as readme.md. Notice readme is capitals. It doesn't have to be, but the first readme file, which goes in the root area of your project. So notice that is my root area of my project. That's where it goes. Let me just close that. Good. So that is the readme file. Okay. So that was our step four. Step five is to make a .github folder. Now, very important. Things have moved on a lot since Visual Studio Code came out. And now because of AI, AI will help you a lot. And in order to give it customized instructions, in other words, it's got the overview of where you're going. You should have a .github folder. 
and inside my .github folder goes your copilot instructions. I'm going to open that up. Now here's my copilot instructions file and this gives the AI agent information about your project. So notice here in my case, I've said web development with client-side languages. You're a web development expert specializing in client-side languages such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Your task is to assist in creating, debugging, and optimizing web applications that run in the browser. So I'm here speaking to the agent. Now, we're not going to look at AI agents in this short course, but as I've mentioned already, GitHub Copilot, and to get to GitHub Copilot, see that little icon up there? If you click on that, and here is where you will have your agent. And down here, if I click on that, you can see I've got agent ask mode, uh, agent mode, ask mode, and edit mode. These are the different modes. If I wanted to ask my AI agent something, I could just click on that and then I will select an agent I want to ask. Now, if you're using the free version, you might only have the ones that are up here, but that's where your agents come in. Now, I'm not going to be speaking about agents in this one, but I want you to be aware of that so that you set this up properly because as you go along, you will use them. It, they're very helpful indeed. And what this is simply doing is I have given my agent the guidelines on how I want it to write the code. Now, you can pause this and read through it and that will give you some idea. But I always advise that you do set up a copilot instructions.md inside your GitHub folder. You don't have to go into too much details. As you get to understand the language more and you get to understand how you want to write your code, then you can add more and more to that. OK, let me go back to my readme file. So here I am now back in my readme file. And then we're going to go into step six. And in this case, we are going to load a Visual Studio Code extension. Now these have developed over the years and of course we, they're always getting better and better. And one of the ones I'd advise you to use this time is the Microsoft Edge tool for VS Code. Now to load an extension, come to here, extensions, there we are, and simply do a search here for Microsoft. Now I've already loaded mine and you can see here, that's the one I want us to get. Now I can make this a bit larger. That's the one you want to get, Microsoft Edge Tool for VS Code. Now, when you do this, if you haven't installed it, you will see an install button there and you simply click it. I've already installed mine. That's why that's not there. If I click on it, you can see here it is and I can uninstall. I don't want to uninstall. In your case, you would have install. Simply click on install and that would install it. And once you install it, you will get this icon here. See where it says Microsoft Tools? Let me just come back up here. If I click on that, that takes me back to my files and I'm going to close that one down. OK, so now you are back to your files. Now, once you've installed it, you will have this little tool here. So now we want to test our setup. We are going to create a new page. Well, I've already created it. I've got it index.html. By the way, to create a new page, you see when you come into the Explorer view here, you have these little icons appear. And if you roll over that one, that's new file. If I click on that, that's how I make a new file. I'm just going to call this one sample.html. And then if I click inside my workspace here, this is where my workspace is now. I can start to build my file here. To build an HTML page in Visual Studio Code, you just type in HTML. You see those nice little drop downs that appear. And I'm going to select HTML version 5 because that is our current version. And there we are. OK, so I've built one of these earlier on. And here it is index.html, HTML pages end in .html. It's an HTML5 page and I've made it all. Now I'm going to close this down to get more room. Notice what I do there. I just click that. I get more workspace to work in. So here is my HTML page. Um, again, you can pause to take a closer look, but it's a very standard page. I have put my CSS into the page and inside the page, uh, that's my body tag my h1 tag, some HTML tags, and down here I've got a JavaScript. And this is going to write something to the console log. Now, this is where this nice tool comes in, the Microsoft Edge tools. If I click on this, and it's going to uh, click on this, this is my Microsoft Edge tools, and I want to, now you might have new launch, because I've launched this before, that's why this has come up. But if you do see this, simply click on that little icon there. In your case, you're probably going to say launch for the first time, because I've done this before, that's why it's come up. But if you do see this, just click on that little plus sign there, 
and it launches a new instance of it. Now let me just collapse this to give you some more space. Good. And I'm going to collapse that again. Brilliant. So there's my page. And now these two is the Microsoft Edge tools. Now, here's where this gets useful. What this is simply doing, it is loading Microsoft Edge within Visual Studio Code. Now I want it to load this particular page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where my files are here. And over this page here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say copy path. That's all I need. So I've now copied the path. Let me collapse that again. And now inside here, I'm using a Windows platform. So inside there, I'm just going to do Control A and that selects everything. And then Control V, that pastes it in and enter. And now my HTML page has been loaded within Visual Studio Code, within Visual Studio Code environment. So this is now, I am now using Microsoft Edge browser. Now, why is this so useful? Now, of course, I can see my whole page here, but even more, I can see the console log. Now, that's already on console log. When you come in the first time, you might have it on elements. So these are all the elements. This is how you look at the development tools. Now I'm going to go to console log and any JavaScript running in console log comes out here. Notice the piece of JavaScript we've got here. I'm not going to teach you JavaScript here, but basically this script is calling, it is sending that to the browser and that's going to say hello, followed by whatever word is put here. So I'm going to change this to my name. Okay, actually let's put that in caps. So I'm going to say D E L E. Okay. Right. And save. Now when you see that there, that means one file is not saved. I'm going to go file, save. That's now saved. And now let's refresh this. And now notice it says, hello, delay. So anything you're sending to the console log, you can see it there. The actual page itself, you can see it there. Here is a very good setup for using Visual Studio Code to build websites. And as you more, use more tools like PHP and things like that, you can add other extensions and it will work along very well. Thank you very much. If you have enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And if there are any other particular tutorials you'd like us to do, please mention that in the comments. Thank you.